Hi there, my name is Michael of the Editor Group, and today I'll be talking about uh, my updated thinking on how we might do um, commit changes from the VS Code Web ID um, with a special caveat of how might we create a merge request with that associated branch when you're um, creating that change. And through through working on this, I also explored uh, some little touches that we can add to the VS Code through their customization abilities to make uh, this experience feel a little bit more um, associated to the GitLab product. All right, so let's jump into it. So last week, I was um, thinking of creating the VS Code um, Web ID within like the context of the existing GitLab UI. So you have like the top header here and this like project toolbar here. So the project toolbar allows you to navigate back to where you came from, um, switch to current branch, and then uh, some commit commit flows up here. Um, after some feedback with um, different people within the teams and designers. Um, there's feedback around whether it's really useful to have this um, top header at this time. And at this time, I think we can explore this uh, through solution validation, um, whether there's a real need to have this while you're in the context of the web ID. And this project toolbar is something that's there, but a lot of this functionality is already built into VS Code. Um, it's just not surfaced um, in the same way. And through a little bit of experimentation um, with the current um, web ID that's using VS Code, um, the proof of concept, we actually don't need this back button because the way VS Code handles uh, tabs of files, um, pressing back doesn't navigate you to the previously open tab. If you have multiple um, tabs open, it just takes you back to where you came from. So it respects the browser's history. So. With that in respect, you know, you could eliminate this, uh, you could eliminate these buttons and uh, potentially um, find a solution within the context of the web ID, uh, VS Code web ID. Um, yeah, so this is like roughly how the commit flow using this kind of pattern would have worked. Uh, so. I took a look at where we're at with the VS Code Web ID and it just plops out something that looks like this, where it's just the uh, code base, uh, VS Code. So how might we take some of these elements that um, help you find where you're at, knowing that you're part of GitLab, um, you know, how might we incorporate that into the VS Code? Um, so the first thing I noticed is that a lot of third-party uh, tools that leverage an open source VS Code and library actually put their logo in the bottom. Um, guidelines around um, designs um, guidelines around the status bar is that you shouldn't use any color except in the context of um, certain special cases. And I think in this case, um, calling out that you are part of uh, GitLab might be a good ex example to leverage this. Um, this is a variation where it's the full name, logo, and, um, and copy. But the, I also have a different example where if we just take this, oops, wrong one. Yeah, I have another example where um, later on you'll see where there's no text here and everything just locks up. Um, to give you context of which um, project, um, which repository you're part of, um, there's that information at the root of the folder of the tree view, but another area you could put it is in the status item. So this would be a new status item that gets added. And we would have like these two things. 
and with status items if you click on them something might happen so in the context of these two buttons if you click oh here's the, the other um, if you click on the GitLab logo it would open up GitLab commands so opening the current project in GitLab opening the active file in GitLab creating a new issue for the project um, copying a link these are all actions that currently exist within the GitLab um, extension um, VS Code extension so that's something that we can leverage or um, reuse somehow um, that would be one way to um, make this uh, useful uh, clicking on the repository name would allow you to then um, view repositories that you've recently visited and uh, open up a whole list of ways for you to search um, GitLab repositories or whether um, and then clicking on that would then open it up directly inside the, in the VS Code instance. Um, Um, since uh, for our first iteration of the VS Code Web IDE, there won't be ability to compile, run package, um, install scripts, or anything like that, like no npm install. So what, what we could do is customize the layout of our uh, VS Code Web IDE to hide or not show the run and debug um, tabs. So that would simplify the tabs over here to just show the explorer, the search, uh, source control extensions, and the GitLab um, extension eventually once that comes around. Um, the other thing that pops up in here um, that doesn't match um, reality in the next one to three milestones is the idea of having a debug console or terminal, because if you can't run the code, um, these things don't have a lot of usage but there is purpose to have problems or output so if you try to commit something and there's a git error or something that would uh, pop out uh, in the output so that's still useful so um, if there's a way to remove those um, on day one and uh, that would be ideal so next we're just going to go and jump through some of the flows of how the whole GitLab um, and um, the VS Code Web ID might work. So here I have, um, I'm in a repository called Lab Code, and from here I want to open up the Web ID, and this is uh, just taking you through what the flow might look like. So Web ID, preparing repository, setting up the views. So these are using some new updated uh, product illustrations here. Um, once that's set up, the first time you open it up, um, we're going to launch a get started a web ID screen. Um, this is one way to do uh, onboarding or a get started view. Um, I've seen other extensions kind of do a single page layout. Um, this is something that we can iterate on. but. And this is um, one way to do it. So choose the look you want. You can choose dark, you can choose light. Um, I'm just gonna choose dark right now, and that looks good. And if you jump on to the next one, this is kind of the pattern that exists in the world. It's a little bit uh, funny how it all works, but um, it does give these check marks to show that you've gone across. Ideally, we would, would then say the preference of light or dark or the custom theme that the user wanted. Um, in GitLab somehow so the next time they launch it um, that's reloaded um, or has some information about um, the features um, understand how you can see things show how you can create a uh, merge request and I'm all done with that clicking on that um, would take you back to the default uh, get started or like an untitled page um, but in VS Code there's always like the get started welcome page um, and you can have the walkthroughs um, listed on the side here um, we can inject our um, get started walkthrough of the web ID here so if the user does want to go back and revisit 
wait a minute, what was that feature? They could click on this and then rediscover that whole flow again. So now we're going to jump into talking about the, the commit flow. The commit flow here, um, I'm going to just go through and the goal of this is to eventually create an MR to um, in GitLab to carry through the change. So I had this uh, golf file.js. I make some changes to it. It lights up in here. Click on that. Um, I have my changes. Click on that. It goes to stage changes. I'll add a commit message in this there like that. And clicking on this will send it to a commit state. Um, so I just committed on my code, but I haven't pushed it up to my branch. So that's what sync changes does. It does that. Um, it's happy. And what do I do now? There's nothing in the UI that tells me, hey, you need to do X, Y, Z to uh, create the MR. Um, at the moment, uh, from the UI, the, the only way to do that is to click this bottom part here and click on that would then open up a, into GitLab where you pick your source branch and target branch and go through the whole flow to create an MR. Is that, uh, I think there's an opportunity here for us to improve upon that. So that's what these next three kind of flows uh, will look into. So one of the things that um, we're able to leverage is the quick pick menu in the VS Code. So same flow. Um, make some changes, go into here, click here, stage changes, cool, and a commit message. Now, this time, I'm going to open up my menu. Um, here, I have commit and commit and start merge request. So this is a custom command that we can put into VS Code that would automatically commit the code, push it, and then start a merge request. This is very similar to what we do in the product today, but this is just calling it out through the menu. Go here, I can start a new branch or choose an existing branch. Let's give it a name. When that's all done, this UI would go back to this state. There's no syncing um, functionality at the moment because we already pushed the change, but um, in a new tab or something, we would have a new merge request with all the changes there because um, the branch was created and all the code was pushed. All that would be in GitLab already uh, without any syncing needed. And yeah, you would go through this flow completely through um, a separate tab in your browser. Cool. Um, if you're following through and you want to um, get stuck somewhere, there's always that restart button at the bottom. The next thing we're going to look at is um, the custom tree view um, inside source control. So same flow, make some changes. This time there is a tree view which in, within this container. So in VS Code, there is a way to say, I want to inject my custom view within one of these um, views, explorer, search, uh, SEM, uh, and for a custom view. And so that's something that you can do. I have my changes here, go through that whole thing, update there. Now I want to start and commit changes. So it's the same flow as um, the pop-up and the menu on the side, but it's just called out on the side here. So. Um, yeah, so the flow is still the same as the other one, uh, but it's just more obvious because the buttons are there. Um, this final uh, version is a little bit different. Um, rather than doing everything automatically, uh, this one um, forces you to kind of click the buttons as you go along. So same flow. Um, enter a commit message. Um, 
that shouldn't be there. Um, here we have like automatically push changes for commits, so you can do something like that. Um, I push the changes. There's no syncing. Um, it says no local changes found. That's cool. Um, so instead of creating the merge request automatically for you, um, see there's nothing there. I can create a merge request in here. Um, let's say I want to merge from this branch into here. Um, add a title, mark it as a draft, and create a merge request. That merge request will be created, um, and then in a separate tab, I can click on this to jump to that uh, merge request whenever I want, or I can also click on this to view within uh, the IDE as well. So this is another way of handling um, merge requests as well. We're going to go through um, a few rounds of solution validation to see which kind of flows um, are, are ideal to go with for our users. Um, one approach is using the quick pick in the menus where everything's um, more VS code built into the uh, menus and then the other one is to explore um, how might it work if we call out all the buttons out in the front and whether we should be doing things automatically for people or should we um, have more of a step through process of um, pushing the changes, um, commit and pushing and then explicitly calling for a create uh, merge request. So that's something that's going to be followed up over the next couple um, milestones. Um, but starting next week, we'll be looking at some solution validation plans. Thank you very much.